You're listening to the Philosopher's Note on Trust Your Vibes. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome to the Philosopher's Notes on Trust Your Vibes, Secret Tools for Sixth Sensory Living by Sonia Choquette. Let's start with a quote. Trusting your vibes is a way of life that creates a partnership with God and moves you through each day as though it were a dance with the divine. What you will discover when practicing these six sensory secrets is that for every step you take toward divine spirit by trusting your vibes, it will take a step toward you. And together, you'll create a life of grace, harmony, simplicity, and abundance. This may seem far-fetched and unlikely to the five-sensory person, but to the six-sensory psychic and soulful person, this is only the beginning. It keeps getting better and better. That's Sonia Choquette from Trust Your Vibes. All right, so you know about your five senses, vision, smell, touch, hearing, and taste. But let's not forget about our sixth. Sonia likes to call our sixth sense our vibes. And in this great book, we learn the secret tools for sixth sensory living. It's a fun, inspiring book packed with big ideas to help us tap into our intuition, emotional guidance system, or good old vibes, whatever you want to call them, to create an extraordinary life. If that sounds like fun, I think you'll dig the book. For now, let's jump in. We'll start with the first big idea, plug in with optimum care. Quote, amazing things happen when you get enough sleep, eat properly, and take it easy. Your nerve endings relax, and your spirit, or the sixth sensory part of you, rejuvenates and begins to shine light on your path. This is what happens when we say that a person shines or radiates. And it's why we draw a light bulb over a person's head to demonstrate inspiration. There's a marvelous French saying that describes this centered and solid spiritual state of awareness. It means, I feel good in my skin. We create a desirable state for all psychic systems by giving our body optimum care, end quote. Isn't it amazing how a book on developing our extrasensory perception advises us to take care of the basic physical needs? It all starts with, as Wayne Dyer says, first being a good animal. If we want to be plugged into our highest selves, we've got to provide a well-rested, fed, and cared-for temple, eh? It reminds me of Dale Carnegie's great book, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. You can see the notes where he dedicates a chapter to the importance of reducing fatigue in order to reduce worry. He says, so to prevent fatigue and worry, the first rule is rest often, rest before you get tired and continues with this cool story on the importance of rest. He says, quote, your heart pumps enough blood through your body every day to fill a railway tank car. It exerts enough energy every 24 hours to shovel 20 tons of coal onto a platform three feet high. It does this incredible amount of work for 50, 70, or maybe 90 years. How can it stand it? Dr. Walter B. Cannon of the Harvard Medical School explained it. He said, quote, most people have the idea that the heart is working all the time. As a matter of fact, there is a definite rest period after each contraction. When beating at a moderate rate of 70 pulses per minute, the heart is actually working only 9 hours out of the 24. In the aggregate, its rest periods total a full 15 hours per day. End quote. So how about you? Can you turn up your optimum care a notch or two? Perhaps giving yourself more rest or eating a little more green stuff or drinking a little more water or going for another walk or what's your thing? Let's plug in with optimum care. And while we're on the subject, how about a little more body love? Next big idea, get out and move. Quote, not only is being physically grounded a solid requirement for tuning into your vibes, it's also an instant antidote for obsession or worry. Whenever you find yourself overly concerned or unable to stop thinking about something, immediately go outside and walk, or better yet, run around the block to disrupt the toxic trance you're in. I've never known anyone to find answers from thinking things to death, but I have known people who gain peaceful insights and grand solutions while strolling through the park, end quote. This is a really big idea. Did you know they've actually scientifically studied the effects of exercise on our emotional well-being? And they've also studied the fact that ruminating, 
when you're in a bad mood is actually totally toxic to your well-being. Yep. Let's look at some wisdom from another cool Sonia, Sonia Liebermersky, one of the world's leading positive psychologists who wrote a great book called The How of Happiness, which I refer to often throughout these notes. You can see the note on it. First, the study on exercise as an antidepressant. Sonia Liebermersky says this, an impressive study of physical activity was published in the Archives of Internal Medicine in 1999. The researchers recruited men and women 50 years old and over, all of them suffering from clinical depression, and divided them randomly into three groups. The first group was assigned to four months of aerobic exercise, the second group to four months of antidepressant medication, Zoloft, and the third group to both. The assigned exercise involved three supervised 45-minute sessions per week of cycling or walking slash jogging at moderate to high intensity. Remarkably, by the end of the four-month intervention period, all three groups had experienced their depressions lift and reported fewer dysfunctional attitudes and increased happiness and self-esteem. Aerobic exercise was just as effective at treating depression as was Zoloft, or as a combination of exercise and Zoloft. Yet exercise is a lot less expensive, usually with no side effects apart from soreness. Perhaps even more remarkably, six months later, participants who had remitted or recovered from their depressions were less likely to relapse if they had been in the exercise group six months ago than if they had been in the medication group. That's really big. Really, 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 really big. And Sonia Lemursky goes off and says, I guarantee you, you will feel better if you exercise. It's huge. Um, and now how about Sonia Lemursky's words on toxic ruminations? Again, this is a scientist telling us that, quote, the combination of rumination and negative mood is toxic. Research shows that people who ruminate while sad or distraught are likely to feel besieged, powerless, self-critical, pessimistic, and generally negatively biased. And she says, if you are someone plagued by ruminations, you are unlikely to become happier before you can break that habit, end quote. So there you go. That's lots of Sonia wisdom. Are you feeling funky? Get out and break the toxic pull with a nice walk or run or whatever you enjoy. It's good for you in all six of your senses. That leads us to the next big idea. Ah, stay calm and breathe, please. Quote, if you want to learn to trust your vibes, you must maintain a peaceful and relatively calm attitude. When you're tense, nervous, or anxious, your energy gets tangled up and blocked and can't enter your heart center where your higher self and your vibes communicate, end quote. Wallace D. Waddle says something very similar in his little book, The Science of Being Great. You can see the notes. He says, you can never become a great man or woman until you have overcome anxiety, worry, and fear. It is impossible for an anxious person, a worried one, or a fearful one to perceive truth. All things are distorted and thrown out of their proper relations by such mental states, and those who are in them cannot read the thoughts of God. End quote. Do you find yourself nervous, tense, or anxious often? Sonia tells us that, quote, remaining calm no matter what's going on around you is an incredible challenge, but it will liberate your psychic sense and will probably add a few years to your life as well. After all, Getting worked up about things only makes them worse. Life is always full of drama and challenges, but you don't have to overreact to any of it if you choose not to, end quote. In this chapter on staying calm called Easy Does It, Sonia talks about the fact that staying calm starts with proper breathing. Ah, time for a nice big breath. As she says, breathing deeply and regularly is not only the key to remaining calm, but also instantly connects us to a higher vibration. When we're stressed or fearful, we tend to hold our breath, which cuts us off from our higher self and our intuitive vibes, end quote. In his great book, The Big Leap, you can see the notes on that, my friend and mentor Gay Hendricks says this, Quote, there's only one way to get through the fog of fear, and that's to transform it into the clarity of exhilaration. One of the greatest pieces of wisdom I've ever heard comes from Fritz Perls, MD, the psychiatrist and founder of Gestalt Therapy. He said, fear is excitement without the breath. 
Here's what this intriguing statement means. The very same mechanisms that produce excitement also produce fear. And any fear can be transformed into excitement by breathing fully with it. On the other hand, excitement turns into fear quickly if you hold your breath. When scared, most of us have a tendency to try to get rid of the feeling. We think we can get rid of it by denying or ignoring it, and we are holding our breath as a physical tool of denial. End quote. And here's Gay's advice on how to breathe into it. He says this, The best advice I can give you is to take big, easy breaths when you feel fear. Feel the fear instead of pretending it's not there. Celebrate it with a big breath, just the way you'd celebrate your birthday by taking a big breath and blowing out all the candles on your cake. Do that, and your fear turns into excitement. Do it more, and your excitement turns into exhilaration. I find it very empowering to know that I'm in charge of the exhilaration I feel as I go through my life. I bet you will, too. End quote. Gosh, I love that. So, ah, let's breathe and turn our fear into excitement as we tune into our vibes. And as we're doing that, let's look at the next big idea. Let's stretch our minds. Quote, follow your physical flexibility exercises with some mental flexibility stretches. Invite your sixth sense to influence you by asking your spirit what it wants to do. If it wants to speak up, speak up. If it wants to be quiet, be quiet. If it wants to go on an adventure, go. Say yes to all your intuitive impulses and be curious where they'll lead. Take a new route to work. Wear something completely different from your usual outfit. Consider a new pair of glasses or get a new haircut just for the sake of exploring a new you. Be curious and surrender to your soul's lead by trying a new restaurant, exploring a hidden neighborhood, or going for an open-ended walk or a no-destination drive. Turn on some exciting music and dance. Move, shake, twist, and bend just because you can. Better yet, dance with a blindfold on. Just move the furniture first. Don't worry, it isn't dangerous, only different. End quote flexibility. It's the hallmark of emotional well-being. We talk fairly often about the idea of a river of flexibility flowing between the banks of rigidity and chaos. We want to avoid being too chaotic or too rigid to harmonize with the flow of flexibility. So how can you get your flexibility on and loosen up your intuitive muscles a little bit more? Next big idea is quit dwelling on the past. Quote, dwelling on the past is perhaps one of the greatest obstacles to spirit. The more we focus on or even glamorize what happened to us yesterday, especially how unfair or unpleasant it was, the more we guarantee that we'll miss the subtle divine guidance being relayed to us at the moment. End quote. This is big and echoed throughout the great books we discuss here. Raymond Charles Barker says this in his book, The Power of Decision. You can see the notes. Quote, the decision to let go of that which has completed its course in your experience is even more important than the decision to welcome new ideas. You cannot walk forward by looking backward. New wine cannot be put into old bottles. For the Bible states that the old bottles will break. You intuitively know what should depart from your life. End quote. And Esther and Jerry Hicks talk about the need to let go of the past and focus on our ideal a lot in their great books on the Law of Attraction and how to connect and express our highest selves. In Money and the Law of Attraction, see notes, they share this great story. Quote, People talk about the reality of their life as if it is important, and we want you to understand it's only the temporary indicator. Do you go to the gas station? Your gas gauge is on empty. Do you go to the gas station and look at your gas gauge in horror? How did this happen? Why, why, why did this happen to me? Do you lay your head on the steering wheel and just say, oh, look what it's come to. I'm finished. I've lived all this life and look where I am. Or do you just fill up? End quote. Ha, I love that image. I don't think we complain quite like that when our emotional fuel gauge is on empty. So what if our life isn't quite what we want it to be right now? It's just a temporary indicator. So what stories are you telling yourself and everyone around you? Is now a good time to let them go and let in the divine? The next big idea is, can I get an amen? 
Quote, like everything else that connects us to our higher self, prayer is most effective when practiced, meaning that you should pray whenever you think of it until it becomes automatic. In other words, pray when you wake up in the morning, while you take a shower, before you drink your morning coffee, and as you drive to work. Pray for the easiest and best way to get through your day. Pray for success in your projects and for patience when those around you get on your nerves. Pray for forgiveness and an open heart. Pray for creative inspiration and for better health. To release the past and to open your mind and heart to a better future. For the willingness to let go of the old and outdated and reach out for something new. For understanding. For faith. For a happy heart in spite of everything. For the right support system and the best job. And for a peaceful home and prosperity. End quote. Amen. Let's pray to that. Two things here. First, notice how important practice is. As Sonia says, like everything else that connects us to our higher self, prayer is most effective when practiced, meaning that you should pray whenever you think of it until it becomes automatic. If we want to attain the heights of our potential, we've got to practice and then practice and practice and practice the stuff we know to be true until the action slash consciousness becomes automatic. George Leonard, in one of my favorite books on the subject called Mastery, encourages us to make our practice both a verb and a noun. He says, a practice as a noun can be anything you practice on a regular basis as an integral part of your life. Not in order to gain something else, but for its own sake. For a master, the rewards gained along the way are fine, but they are not the main reason for the journey. Ultimately, the master and the master's path are one. And if the traveler is fortunate, that is, if the path is complex and profound enough, the destination is two miles farther away for every mile he or she travels, end quote. All right, so we've got to practice. How can you turn your practices up a notch? That's point number one. Point number two, prayer. It's big. In another section in the book, Sonia tells us, quote, it's really quite simple. If you want inspiration, think inspiring thoughts. If you want healing, think healing thoughts. If you want creativity, think creative thoughts. And if you want to live in a higher way, think higher thoughts. End quote. It's all about controlling the contents of our consciousness. And prayer is a really cool way to help us do that. And as we get our prayer on, let's remember Meister Eckhart's wisdom on the subject. He says, quote, If the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is, Thank you, it will be enough. The next big idea We've got two more, is laughing matters. Quote, to be intuitive, we must cultivate our sense of humor and look for reasons to laugh everywhere. We become so self-absorbed and serious when it comes to our problems and melodramas that we disconnect from our deeper sense of who we are as beautiful souls. We withdraw from life instead of enjoying it. Laughter brings us back to ourselves and back to life. End quote. Tickle, tickle. (laughs) What have you laughed at lately? If you're looking for a great chuckle, I think you'll dig this YouTube video clip, and if you're on the PDF, you can actually click on it, called Everything's Amazing and Nobody's Happy. You can Google it if you aren't looking at the PDF and don't have it around. Um, This clip, Everything's Amazing and Nobody's Happy, is by a comedian on Conan O'Brien's show, talking about, among other things, how it should be illegal to complain about anything when you're sitting in a chair in the air, a.k.a. flying. It's a hilarious clip and an incredible reminder on how easily we can take life's gifts for granted. And here's one of the 33 six sensory practice exercises that concludes the chapter called Laughing Matters. Sonia says this, quote, This week, laugh a lot. Look for the humor in things. Sing in the shower. Create shampoo sculptures with your hair in the bathtub. Make funny faces while brushing your teeth. Read humorous books. Rent comedies. Go to a karaoke club with a friend and join in. Call your best pal from grade school and reminisce. Goof around with your kids and play with your dog. In other words, get over your seriousness and let your hair down. Fake it if you have to, but do a good job of it. Don't worry if you look foolish. The more foolish you are, the more enlightened you'll feel. End quote. Laughing matters. Get your laughter on, will you? All right, and the final big idea is God, the ultimate gardener. Quote, timing is the divine's way of again reminding us that we co-create with the universe. We aren't doing it alone. We plant water and weed the seeds of creativity, but we don't have the power to make them grow, let alone grow according to our own schedule. How it all unfolds is up to God. 
God's wisdom will fulfill our deepest intentions once we set them in motion. Our part is to create the perfect conditions for the universe to flow through us, much like our job is to create the perfect conditions for the garden to grow. But that's all we can do. God flows through us and develops our gardens according to his own timetable. And thank goodness for that, because God knows and grows better than we do. End quote. That is amazing. I love the image of preparing our garden the best we can and letting God take care of the rest. It's not a beautiful image. It also reminds me of a question Joseph Campbell asks in The Power of Myth. You can see the notes on that. Campbell says, what am I? Am I the bulb that carries the light? Or am I the light of which the bulb is a vehicle? I love to imagine that my job is to create a powerful bulb so I can flow as much of God's divine electricity through me as possible. I don't want to be a 10-watt bulb that flickers and would blow up if 250 watts of energy were pushed through it. I'm committed to doing my part to align with my highest self, to get my wattage up to 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, get up to that range and light up my part of the world. How about you? And of course, as we tend our metaphorical gardens and light bulbs, we've got to trust the divine dance. As Sonia so beautifully says, quote, the universe has a pulse and rhythm of its own, and it wants to carry you with it. So if you dance with spirit, just remember to let it lead. So as we get our trusting our vibes groove on, let's ask ourselves, self, what's the number one sixth sensory practice you just know would most positively impact our life? And then ask, is now a good time to rock it? It always is, right? All right, time to wrap this note up with love and blissful vibes. All right, there you go. That is the note. Let's take a look at Sonia and uh, some other notes I think you'll enjoy if you like this. So Sonia Choquette, and I hope that's how you say her name, is a world-renowned author, storyteller, vibrational healer, and sixth sensory spiritual teacher in international demand for her guidance, wisdom, and capacity to heal the soul. She's the author of several best-selling books, including Ask Your Guides, Trust Your Vibes, and Soul Lessons and Soul Purpose, and numerous audio programs and card decks. She resides with her family in Chicago. That's from adapted from Hay House. You can learn more about Sonia at soniachoquette.com. That's S-O-N-I-A-C-H-O-Q-U-E-T-T-E.com. She's a really cool person. I don't know her yet personally. Um, not yet, but you can tell that she's just a fantastic human being. I really think you'll enjoy the book if you're feeling the vibe. So if you like this, I think you'll also enjoy the notes on Ask and It Is Given, The Power of Intention, Money and the Law of Attraction, The Power of Decision, The How of Happiness, The Big Leap, The Science of Being Great. All righty then. How about some quotes from the sidebar? One difference between spiritual law and ego law is that spiritual law is very playful and creative, while ego law is fixed and routine. The best way to maintain a higher vibration is to make every thought and word you use or listen to as loving and nurturing as possible. This is a great one here. Excessive adrenaline is to your intuition what kryptonite is to Superman. Lethal. Remember, unless you begin to trust your vibes as they move through your body, you'll never experience a higher, more peaceful way of life. But if you do, you can access your inner healer immediately. It's your choice. The universe has a pulse and rhythm of its own, and it wants to carry you with it. So if you dance with spirit, just remember to let it lead. Love that quote so much, wanted to repeat it. So that is Trust Your Vibes, Secret Tools for Sixth Sensory Living. Remember, five senses, vision, smell, touch, hearing, and taste. Let's add a sixth, your vibes, your intuition. There you go. Hope you enjoyed this quick look at one of my favorite books. And here is to trusting our vibes more today and tomorrow, and the day after that, and the day after that. And then uh, just keep the streak going. All right. Trust you're doing wonderfully and look forward to sharing more with you soon. Have a fantastic day.
we hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note. Please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.